Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Salvation Basics class on this Sunday, uh, 26 September 2021. Uh, today, my message is entitled Repentance and Faith in Action, right? Repentance and Faith in Action, our key text is taken from one of my favorite passages, Acts chapter 20, verse 21. All right, if you're ready and if you're there, Acts chapter 20, verse 21, the Word of God reads, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance and fa- uh, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, may the Lord bless the reading of His Word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for this time to be back uh, in this class to preach Your Word. Father, we just ask them for the aid of the Holy Spirit uh, to, to lead and guide my thoughts uh, and my words as I preach this word. And Father, we ask for the Holy Spirit to prepare the hearts and minds of those here to, who are listening in, um, that they may respond to your word, that they may understand your word, that they may understand your will for them um, uh, regarding uh, salvation. So Lord, uh, we, we thank you for what you're about to do as we commit this time into your hands. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, and amen. Um, you know, looking at a key text, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ means this one thing, right? Salvation is the same for both Jews and Gentiles. And what, uh, what are required is repentance and faith, all right? The two chief ingredients in salvation are repentance toward God and faith toward, uh, toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, about a year ago, I preached repentance and faith uh, as this subject is vital in understanding salvation. It is worth repeating again and again. Today, we see um, uh, uh, the repentance and faith in action. Um, as we take a quick look, uh, um, uh, uh, as we t- take a quick look at repentance and faith in action, I'm sorry about that, and the enduring mercy of God, right? And mercy is defined as the loving kindness of God. And we'll be looking at the two thieves who were crucified together with Christ at Calvary. And the word Calvary in Latin means skull. All right, our main text for today uh, will be taken from Matthew 27, Mark 15, Luke 23, and Psalm 136. I'll repeat, uh, Matthew 27, Mark 15, Luke 23, and Psalm 136. And we'll just dive straight in. Uh, Calvary, all right? Uh, Calvary, Calvary or Golgotha is a place of exec- execution. So Christ at Calvary, uh, therefore, would mean Christ at his place of execution. Um, Jesus was hung on the cross at Calvary between two thieves. Uh, they were also known as malefactors or transgressors, and transgressors are people who transgress the law, right? Um, and malefactors are people who do evil things, um, bad things. And the word of God in Matthew chapter 27, verse 38 uh, which is also um, uh, uh, repeated in Luke 23, uh, 23, 33, and John 19, 16. They basically say the same thing, that Jesus Christ was crucified with two malefactors and he was in the middle. All right, Ma- Ma- uh, Matthew 27, verse 38, 38 uh, the word of God reads, Then were two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And Luke 23, 33, uh, it says, And when they were come to the place, which is, uh, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And in John 19, 16, uh, where they crucified him and two other with him on either side, one and Jesus in the midst. That Jesus would share execution space and time with transgressors was prophesied centuries ago. No, in fact, more than centuries ago. All right, for us, it was, it was uh, uh, at more than two millennia ago, right? But for Jesus, it was centuries before, um, uh, 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 before his execution, before his uh, crucifixion. Uh, his, his crucifixion was, uh, was, uh, was prophesied by Isaiah centuries ago, right? Isaiah chapter 53, verse 12. Isaiah 53, uh, 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 verse 12, in the latter part of that passage reads, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sins, uh, the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Right? Christ bore the sin of many, and Christ, uh, and Christ interceded for transgressors. All right? You know, Christ is now at the right hand of his Father. Um, and he, he's, he's making intercessions for us. He's the mediator between man and God. 
he will say unto God the Father and say, Father, this, this person has repented and he's put his faith in me for his salvation. He is under my blood. He's under my blood. He's under my blood. Right? Although Jesus was the perfect Lamb of God and acceptable, the only acceptable sacrifice to God, you know, his sacrifice would mean nothing to those who die in their sins. All right? Those who die in their sins will bear their own sins and will pay for them. And the sacrifice of Jesus Christ would mean nothing to them. Because his sacrifice, where these, where these sinners who die in their sins are concerned, was not accepted, or rather was not um, uh, acted upon and was not trusted in, all right? And these people will pay for their sins eternally. Those who reject Christ essentially take back their sins that Christ took upon himself upon, you know, on his cross, or on his cross rather. Imagine that, all right? Christ would only intercede for those who come to him by repentance and faith, all right? Otherwise, he would not intercede for the, for the continuing sinner. If someone has never repented, if someone who has never put their faith in Jesus Christ, why would, why would God, why would God the Son, Jesus Christ, say, well, Father, take him in, you know, we'll, we'll make him your son, we'll make him your child, we'll make him a child of God. It doesn't, have, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't happen that way. All right? The, the, the sinner needs to understand that he is a sinner, he is not right with God. He needs to repent. And then he needs to put his faith in the sacrifice of Christ. All right, which is why I said that a sacrifice of Christ on the cross would mean nothing to those who die in their sin because they have not trusted in Christ to save them. All right? So the thing is, how can a lawyer, you know, you know an, an analogy is how can a lawyer represent someone in a court of justice if that somebody has not appointed him first? Right? You know what I mean? If I'm, if I'm, in, if I'm in trouble with the law and I need legal representation, I need to appoint somebody. I need to go to a lawyer and say, lawyer, I'm in trouble with the law. I did something wrong. Will you represent me? I, have, I need to put my faith and trust in that lawyer. Right? So, it is correct that scriptures prophesied that he bore the sins of many and interceded for transgressors. Right? That's, uh, that's at Calvary. My next point is the attitude of the thieves at the cross at Calvary, on the cross at Calvary. All right? They mocked and taunted Jesus. Right? In the beginning, both of them did that. Right? Matthew chapter 27, verses 41 through 44. All right? Likewise, the word of God reads, also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, he saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him, come down from the, let him now come down from the cross. They mocked him, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. Right? So we had, the, we had the, uh, uh, Jesus had the uh, chief priests along with the scribes and the elders mocking him, uh, mocking him and taunting him. Not only that, the two malefactors uh, on, his right, on his right hand and on his uh, left hand uh, did the same thing. They mocked and taunted Christ. Right? Look at Mark 15.32. Mark 15.32, Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. They, you know, you know, you know, the thieves, the malefactors, although they were, they were there um, uh, 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 um, justly for their crimes, they looked upon Jesus uh, with, with, um, with contempt and they mocked him and they reviled him. And, um, and in Luke 23, verse 39, and one of the malefactors, which were, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. If you are who you are, save yourself and save us. Get us off this cross. Why can't you do that? But 
Christ had to die on the cross, had to shed his blood. He had to die on the cross in order to resurrect three days later, three days and three nights later. Otherwise, there'll be, there'll be no fulfilling of prophecy regarding him, regarding what he came to do for all men. Right? So, in this case, it was a pot calling the kettle black. Except that Jesus was not black, Jesus was pure. Note the hypocrisy and an irony of their actions. The thieves were going to die for their crimes, yet they had the time, the energy, and the shamelessness or the pride to mock Christ. Right? So, so thus, uh, uh, such was the attitude of the thieves, and such was, um, um, uh, um, and such was the, uh, were the, were the view all right, of, of how people viewed and regarded Christ at the time um, that, they, that even malefactors who were about to die uh, 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 mocked Christ on the cross, right? However, within a very short period of time, there was a change in one of the thieves, All right? There was a change in one of the thieves. One thief had a change of mind, and not just that. He had a change of heart. All right? Very shortly thereafter, in Luke chapter 23, verses 40 and 41. All right? So you look at coming back to Luke chapter 23, verse 30, uh, 20, uh, 39, one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save, your, uh, save thyself and us. But in the next two verses, but the other answering him, answering rebuked him, saying, Dost dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? Well, you're condemned in the same way you're hanging here together with Christ. And we indeed justly, for for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. Right? So in a very short period of time, um, uh, you know, coming back to Matthew 27, uh, verses 41 through 44, but it's 44, all right? In verse, in verse 44, the thieves also, which were crucified with him, thieves, all right? The Bible uh, noted this in plural, both of them. Um, uh, uh, the thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. And in Mark 15, verse 32, Right? Let Christ, the King of, uh, of, of Israel, decide, uh, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him cr- reviled him. All right? Again, it's plural. They that were crucified with him reviled him. But yet, in a very short period of time, from railing on Christ, on reviling Christ, on mocking Christ, one of the thieves had a change of mind, had a change of heart. For, to, from, 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 you know, mocking Christ, now he's, he's telling the other thief off, right? Coming back to Luke 23, verses 40 and 41. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God? Don't you fear God, seeing that you're, you're, you are, you know, you're, being, you have, you're suffering the same condemnation? And then he said, we indeed justly, we are here justly, we are righteously here suffering punishment for our crimes. For we, for we, look, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. We are receiving what, you know, we are here justly and we are being rewarded for our actions. But this man, meaning Christ, has done nothing amiss. Crucifixion is a long and painful execution. Perhaps it's to help people hanging on the cross to reflect on the evil of the deeds. I will not be here if I had not done this. I I wish I didn't do this. If I hadn't done that, um, I wouldn't be hanging here. Except that, you know, very sorry, uh, crucifixion means that you're going to end up dead. No amount of crying and bargaining is going to have them take, uh, take you down from the cross. You're meant to die. All right? It is a, it's meant to be a, cru, a, a, you know, a, an excruciating death. Right? Although scriptures do not say how long it took for them to die, it was at least three hours. Right? You're hanging there. You, you've, got, you've, got, you've got 
nails through your through your hands or through your you know or through your hands through your legs um 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 and 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 you know you're hanging there you're suffocating to death slowly because the weight of your body hanging on the cross puts a lot of stress on your lungs right and you basically suffocate to death and 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 the and you know you know the amount of pain in your body trying to support your weight is such that you know you know you you either you know you either suffer pain or you suffocate or both all right again of all those scriptures did not say uh, did not quite say how long it took for them to die it was at least 3 hours look at john 19 uh, verse 14 and it was a preparation of the passover and about the sixth uh, sixth hour all right and he said unto the jews behold your king Right, the sixth hour mean it means it was about noon. The first hour is six p.m. Uh, rather, I'm sorry, six a.m. So, um, so the sixth hour is about noon. Right? in Luke twenty-three verse uh, verse forty-four, and it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. So the sixth hour was noon. The ninth hour would be about three p.m. All right. And, um, and by this, we know Christ was crucified near noon and he died ab- about, about 3 p.m. or, you know, uh, or past 3 p.m. So, so it took them at least three hours to die. And the thing is that one of the thieves got saved in, in, in those three hours. Luke 23, 42. Luke chapter 23, verses 42 and 43. And he said unto Jesus, after, after railing, you know, after scolding and rebuking the other thief, he turned to Jesus and he turned to Jesus and said unto Jesus, Lord, he called Jesus Lord, you know, from railing upon Christ, from reviling Christ, excuse me, from taunting and mocking Christ, he now calls Jesus Lord, all right? There's another parallel. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's another similarity in the book of Acts, and that was the uh, the, the Pharisee named Saul, all right, who was breed, uh, who was breathing fire and brimstone, and was on his way to the to Damascus with letters from uh, from Jerusalem to arrest and to bring back uh, uh, Christians who were preaching in the name of Christ, right? So he was on his way to um, to uh, 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 to Damascus when a bright light. Shone around him, and he fell off his uh, his 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 ride. And a voice called out to him, "Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me?" And it was at that point that Saul heard the heard the voice and called out, "Lord!" All right, but before that, you know, he was going around arresting and 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 consenting to the. Uh, um, uh, consenting to the um, uh, uh, the death of of, of Christians, um, but now, um, but now he is, um, uh, uh, but now he's saying, "Lord." All right, coming back to our thief on the cross, um, uh, he is now calling Jesus Christ, Lord. Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I said, I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. All right? Some points I want to make, uh, which, I've, uh, which I just made, but I'll make it again. The thief went from... Re- uh, re- re- uh, I'm sorry. The thief went from reviling Christ to A, changing his mind about himself. Luke chapter 23, verse 41. All right, Luke chapter 23, verse 41, um, uh, it says, And we justly indeed, uh, we indeed justly, for we, re- for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. He changed his mind about Christ. I'm sorry, he changed his mind about Christ. This man has done nothing amiss. He, is, he shouldn't be here. He's innocent. He's crucified wrongly. Right, the next point is rebuking the other thief. Repentance brings a change of action. Luke 23, verse 40. Right? But the other answering rebuked him, saying, 
Dost thou not fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? He said to the other thief, hey, stop it. Jesus is innocent. He should not be here. Uh, he's been crucified wrongly. But we as thieves, we are crucified justly. He had a change of mind about Christ. Luke 23, 42. He called Jesus Christ Lord. From saying things like, you know, um, uh, uh, from saying things like, uh, uh, for, for whatever he said, you know, you know, you know, the Bible did not record what, what the what the repentant thief said. It was the other one who said, "If thou be Christ, save us, save thyself and us." Or he had a he had a change of mind about Christ. He now calls Christ Lord, and then he puts his and then he put his faith in Christ. Luke twenty three verse forty two. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. He put his faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, you do this. The thief did not get off his cross to do anything for righteousness. He could not. He did not get baptized. He did not offer anything to Jesus Christ. He was hanging there. He was helpless. Right? Acts, 8, uh, uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 20. All right? There was uh, Simon the sorcerer uh, who, who believed, but yet his belief was not, uh, was not a saving belief, but he followed, you know, you know he believed uh, 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 something. Right? And uh, he saw, that he saw the, the, the power of Peter to heal and he said unto Peter, give me, this, give me this Holy Spirit, give me this power, and I'll give you money in return. And the word of God in Acts chapter 8, verse 20 uh, uh, reads, But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. All right, let me say it again. The thief did not get off his cross, did not get off, did not get off, get off his cross to do anything for righteousness, because he could not. And because he was not off the cross, he didn't get baptized. I'm saying this because there are people who, out there who believe that in order to be saved, you need to be baptized. You need to be baptized in order to be saved. All right? And there was no works of righteousness. There was no baptism. The thief could not offer anything to Jesus Christ. But what did the thief do? The thief did the very two things that our key text today uh, says, all right? Our key text says, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. The thief, so what did the thief do? The thief repented and put faith in Christ. Now, the thing is, what made the thief repent and, 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 and be faithful? Right? It might have been that the thief had heard about, uh, heard about Christ uh, or heard of Christ uh, uh, you know, during his preaching ministry. He might even have witnessed Christ in action, right? seen the miracles of Christ. Um, you know, or maybe what he witnessed of Christ is he hung on the cross, but of weightier import was that the thief realized in the, you know, between the time that Christ uh, was nailed to the cross and the, and, and, and the time he died, the Christ, uh, rather that the thief realized that Christ was, to sit, was sinless and that he, he came to know that Christ was God. You know, um, the Bible didn't say any. Uh, the Bible didn't record uh, everything that happened between the time that Christ was nailed to the cross and was 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 raised up and 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 he died, right? But somewhere along the way, the thief witnessed something for himself. Okay, my next point is the faithfulness of Christ. All right, the faithfulness of Christ. Christ imputed righteousness upon the thief. He bore his sin, sin and interceded for him. Luke 23, 43. And Jesus said unto him, 
Verily, I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. The faithfulness of Christ, all right, where there's, repent, where there's genuine repentance, where there's genuine faith, all right, God is faithful in keeping his promise. And Jesus said unto the thief, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Your body is going to die. But where I'm going to be, you are going to be with me. James, 2, uh, James chapter 2, verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled, was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God and was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called friend of God. So the thief believed Jesus Christ. He called Jesus Christ, Lord, remember me when you come, when you, uh, uh, remember me when you come into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. The thief got saved. So within that three hours, the thief went from an unbeliever to a repentant believer. All right? The comfort from Christ. Being crucified, neither Christ nor the thief could do anything else but die. But Jesus confirmed to the thief his life after death by being with him in paradise. All right? John chapter 6, verse 37, the second part. And the word of God reads, And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. I will of a certainty not cast out. All right? So this runs against those who say that your salvation can be lost. So if Jesus Christ says that those who come to him, he will in no wise cast out, then how can it be that man says that you know, your salvation can be lost? Therefore, you need to keep up good works in order to stay saved. How does that work when God says, when Jesus says that I will in no wise cast out? Should I, you know, should you believe God or should you believe man? There's nothing in the Bible that says that, well, you know, hey, your salvation is, is, uh, is, is probationary. All right? It is nothing that says that your salvation is temporary or rather, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, you're on probation uh, provided that you do this, 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 and that. So that at the point of death, if you've got this, you know, if, you, if, you, if you've got all this, then you, fine, you are saved. Otherwise, too bad. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen that way. Because if, that, if it happens that way, then God is a liar. If God is a liar, then how far can you trust his promises? Right? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19, I think it is. Right? Those who call upon Jesus Christ and believe on him and believe upon his death and his, res and his resurrection are men most miserable. Because we're, we're, we're believing on a lie and not a promise. Now, thanksgiving. Thanksgiving to God for his enduring mercy. Thanksgiving to God for his enduring mercy. You know, with regard to my own salvation, I give the almighty God thanks, honor, and glory. For those of you who, have, who know my uh, salvation uh, testimony, um, is that uh, I'll, I'll just share it briefly with, uh, uh, with you here. At age 15, I thought I was saved, right? I had, I had read uh, Christian tracts. Uh, I said the sinner's prayer, um, and I thought I was saved. Uh, but in reality, I wasn't, I wasn't saved till 22 years later. Right? Because within, you know, within that 22 years, there was no change in me. There was no desire to read God's word. There was no desire to go to church. There was no spiritual growth. I was living life as before. There was no change in Roy at all. But God was merciful and God was gracious because within that 22 years, I did all sorts of things that I could have died from. Right? Um, in fact, in 1999, that's right, 1999, August in 1999, I almost died, all right? Uh, it was a Sunday. 
and um, and 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 I was getting ready for 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 competition, and I was rushing through my breakfast, and I swallowed uh, more than a mouthful of food, right? Uh, and the food got stuck going down my throat. And uh, just at that point where actually, um, uh, uh, you know, where my esophagus uh, expanded enough to close off my airway and I could not breathe. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it was truly a very, very terrifying moment. Um, but again, I give God the honor, the glory and the thanks uh, that, you know, that bolus of food moved down a little bit. And... Um, and, um, and, and, you know, the airway opened again. I was able to breathe and I survived, right? Um, uh, uh, but God dealt with me. And, um, you know, if I had died that day, I certainly would not, well, you know, I, I, <laughs> I will not be uh, anywhere near God. I will be uh, in, in the place with a the, with the rich man, um, uh, um, suffering torment. Uh, wishing that Lazarus was there to, uh, to, to put his finger in water and just dip it onto my, onto my tongue that I may have a brief relief from the torment. Right? God dealt with me between that time and 2002, God dealt with me uh, gently and he opened my eyes to the fact that I was not saved. And in April 2002, I got saved. All right? I give thanks to God for his mercy, for his grace, for his patience with me, right? And the psalmist always gave thanks to him for his enduring mercy, gave thanks to God for his enduring mercy. Look at Psalm chapter 136, verses 1 through 3, and, uh, and verse 26. And, um, and verses 1 through 3 reads, O oh, give thanks unto the, God, unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. All right, and Psalm 136 verse 26 says, O oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. God's mercy is, is always there. All right? That, which is why we are not consumed. God is merciful. God has not dealt with man according to his sin. And God is gracious also. God's grace means that he's given us the Lord Jesus Christ, right? the sacrifice of Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, uh, the shedding of his blood for the remission of sin, that those who come and call upon Christ may have eternal life. All right? Um, today is a short message. You know, uh, in closing, I want to say several things. Salvation is simple. It's nothing complicated. Don't let, uh, don't let people tell you that, uh, that um, uh, don't, let other don't let other people tell you uh, uh, that it is. All right? If scriptures don't tell you so, don't believe man. Believe God. Believe his word. All right? Repent of your sins. Repent of your own righteousness. Turn to Jesus Christ. Humble yourself before God. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your faith in the finished works of, of Christ on the cross to save you. All right, again, our key text, Acts 20, verse 21, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. None other but Christ. All right, Lord, uh, John 14, verse 6. John 14, verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way the truth and the life. I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No man, you know, no, Jesus Christ is the only salvation, only way to salvation. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 reads, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that name is Jesus Christ. We need to confess. All right? How do we confess? Do we confess to man? No, we don't confess to man. We confess to God. 1 John 1.9 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins 
and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, you don't have to confess every single sin that you've ever committed. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot remember every single thing you've ever committed. Right? Because if that is a requirement for salvation, then we are all dead. Then we are all lost forever. Then we are all destined for the lake of fire. Forget it. You know, it's game over. Let's get on with your life uh, as, as well, as, as best as you can. Because one fine day, you're going to croak and then, and then it's a lake of fire next. No. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and, and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Romans chapter 10, verse 10 and, uh, verses 10 and 11. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This confession is what? It's agreeing with God that you are a sinner. It is agreeing with God that you're unrighteous. It is agreeing with God that Christ is the only way. For Scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Faith, belief. John 3.18 He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And again, ladies and gentlemen, you know, uh, Psalm 51, uh, verse 5, I think it is, um, uh, uh, you know, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. The thing is that we are all born in sin. Romans, uh, in, in the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 23, I think it is. Um, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All right? So we are all born unbelievers. So, we are, so, 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 so by, by, by logic and definition, we are, you know, we are already condemned. But that condemnation can be reversed when we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, right? When we believe upon the name of the, uh, of the only begotten Son of God, we can be saved. But what first? We need to repent first, right? I've said this before. You know, if you're not going to repent, you, you know, the, God is not going to give you His Son. God is not going to say, all right, fine, you know, uh, I'm going to give an, an unrepentant person salvation. No, it doesn't work that way. Right? You don't have to carry the burden of your own sins and attempt to pay for it. Christ has borne your sins on the cross and is ready to intercede for you. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was, co- which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing, nailing it to his cross. All right, Just for a quick recap, um, within a very short period of time, the th- one of the thieves on the cross came to repent, right? There was a change of mind. There was a change of heart. He now, in, you know, he went from railing and reviling Christ to, to calling him Lord. He confessed that he was there on the, cor- on the cross justly and righteously, for he received the due rewards of his, of his actions. But he now called Christ Lord. And he said, and he said to and he said to Christ, Remember me when thou comest into your kingdom. And what did Christ do? Christ said, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. You are saved. You're gonna be with me. The thing is, all right, repentance and faith in action. You know, don't let people tell you that salvation is difficult. Repentance is difficult. Faith is difficult. You don't understand this or you don't, or that faith, or that, you know, repentance and faith are the same thing. No, they are not the same thing. Or that, you know, you don't need to repent. You just got to have faith because that's what the Bible says. Well, you need to buy, you need to read the Bible and, and understand the Bible as a whole. You cannot cherry pick passages here and there and then say, well, you know, uh, it doesn't say repentance is needed in John chapter X verse Verse Y, right? Uh, no, you can't do that. The Word of God, if the Word of God says that repentance is needed, then repentance is needed. Jesus Christ preached repentance. Paul preached repentance. John preached repentance. God says, repent. In fact, if, it, if there's anything, I'll go, out, I'll go out on a limb and say, 
repentance. There's more weight on repentance than there is on faith. Because until you recognize that you are a sinner, lost and condemned, helpless, hopeless, unrighteous before God, you're not going to humble yourself before God. Repentance is to turn from yourself, turn from your sins, turn from your righteousness, and to turn to God in humility. If you're not going to have that humility, you can say, well, you know, I believe Jesus Christ is the, is, is the only begotten Son of God, that Jesus Christ hung on the cross, shed his blood to die for me, therefore I'm saved. No. Why do you need Jesus Christ when you're not going to turn from your sins? When Jesus Christ came to save you from your sins, there has to be repentance first. So, ladies and gentlemen, can you be saved today? Yes, even so. And I pray that there'll be salvation even today. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for this time, for the preaching of your word. And Lord, we just ask that, um, that you help those here uh, who have heard your word to understand that salvation is not difficult. Um, but what may be difficult is to, is to surrender one's pride, right? to humble oneself before a thrice holy God of heaven who created everything. But Lord, nothing is impossible. Lord, I just ask that you convict and that, um, and that, and that you prick people in their hearts um, uh, of their sins, of their, uh, of their lostness, of their need for the Lord Jesus Christ that they may come to repentance and faith in Christ. So Lord, uh, we thank you once again for this time. Uh, we ask that uh, you dismiss us uh, with the riches of your blessings. Uh, uh, for those here who are not saved, Father, we just ask that you keep them safe, um, uh, uh, even as you did me, and that you lead them to salvation. So Lord, again, thank you very much. We, uh, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you next week. Have a good week ahead. Bye-bye.